Hi, we're going to be demonstrating the hallux valgus correction utilizing a minimally invasive approach. The first step in performing the distal metatarsal osteotomy is to mark off uh, the incision and osteotomy level, and this is done under serum fluoroscopy. Uh, a guide wire can be placed on the skin, and then a, an x-ray can be obtained. Once the surgeon is satisfied with the level of the osteotomy, a two or three millimeter incision is drawn, and the incision is made. A beaver blade was utilized to perform the incision. Next, blunt dissection is carried straight down to bone to avoid the neurovascular structures. Once the bone is palpated, a periosteal elevator is utilized in the path of the osteotomy. Care is taken to palpate the bone, and this is done under fluoroscopy. Once the surgeon is satisfied with the level of the cut, the burr is utilized to perform a through and through osteotomy. When I make this cut, I try to go from medial to lateral with an initial pilot drill hole. And once you're satisfied, the osteotomy can be completed. Once a through and through osteotomy has been performed, the surgeon can confirm by translating the osteotomy or derotating to make sure the osteotomy is through and through. The next step is the critical step in this procedure is placing the temporary fixation uh, for translation reduction as, as well as um, to maintain the capital fragment laterally once it's been translated. This is a very important step. I like to utilize a 2-0 Steinman pin or a 2-0 wire in the, in the set. The key is to match the declination of the first metatarsal, which is slightly planar, and advance the wire along the base of the proximal phalanx, and it should exit distally. Once the wire has been advanced, it will exit just adjacent to the, the nail fold or slightly planar to it, and that is an acceptable place. Now the wire will be pulled back, and once the reduction maneuvers are made, the, this wire will be going down the shaft. As you can see that the um, the capital fragment has been translated laterally. Clearly, this patient does not have a hallux valgus deformity, so you're not going to see a lot of translation. But when I try to translate the capital fragment, I aim for 90% translation uh, of the capital fragment. In this step, it is also possible to derotate the capital fragment. But once I'm satisfied with the translation, the wire is can be manually advanced uh, along the path of the the hemostat. It's important to check if the wire is in the shaft of the metatarsal. Um, the goal is to keep the, sh uh, the wire in the midpoint. However, if there is a elevated first metatarsal, the, cap and the wire can be positioned either dorsally or plantarly, and that will impart the opposite translation to the capital fragment. The next step is placing the guide wires for the definitive fixation. This is the more challenging aspects of this procedure. Some technical tips, it's important to utilize your thumb and your index finger. The thumb is on the dorsal aspect of the capital fragment. The index finger is on the plantar aspect, and this will help the surgeon triangulate placement of the wire. The second wire is placed adjacent to the first wire. This one is a little bit more proximal and is aiming for the more lateral aspect of the capital fragment. In a more hallux valgus type case, this wire may be exiting the lateral cortex, going through some clear space back into the capital fragment, and that is acceptable. Once the incision has been made and blunt dissection has been carried to the bone, the drill holes are made. 
So once we make our measurement, it measures 42, but we're not on bone and under C-arm. Uh, we confirmed that it was 36. So we're satisfied with our fixation. If we could have made our proximal screw purchase the lateral cortex of the capital fragment, that would be also very helpful. But in many of these cases with a larger IM, you may find yourself that the smooth portion of the screw would be exiting the lateral cortex, then back into the capital fragment, and that is uh, completely acceptable. The temporary reduction wire is removed and we can see that we are able to maintain our correction and our translation. Uh, if the surgeon felt or needed a additional Aiken osteotomy, he or she can perform that at this juncture. The lateral view is obtained to confirm excellent alignment and fixation. The same steps that were performed for the initial metatarsal osteotomy are utilized for the Aiken osteotomy that is minimally invasive in approach. I mark out the incision at the level of the osteotomy and there are various levels that the Aiken can be performed. Surgeons sometimes use a cylindrical Aiken approach, a oblique Aiken approach, either that is more proximal to distal or distal to proximal. It's up to the surgeon which method they choose. I tend to perform a more distal Aiken, um, primarily given the way I fixate the Aiken itself. Under fluoroscopy, we confirm the placement of our incision, and our incision is made with a beaver blade which will be followed by our blunt dissection and periosteal elevation. This x-ray demonstrate that this burr is different to the metatarsal osteotomy burr. It's a two millimeter by 12 millimeter burr, which helps maintain the lateral cortex and will make it easier to maintain a hinge for um, the correction. It's a small oblique osteotomy and wedge resection has been performed. However, it's uh, important to try to maintain the lateral hinge and I will gradually reduce the osteotomy without breaking the hinge by man manual manipulation. Once I'm satisfied with the reduction, I will place my guide wire for my screw. I start the guide wire off at the distal aspect of the phalanx aiming for the proximal medial aspect. A beaver blade was utilized to make a small incision in the inner space. Blunt dissection was carried to bone and then the screw was measured. Once the appropriate depth has been measured, a screw is inserted. Once compression has been achieved of the oblique wedge osteotomy. The incisions are closed in a standard manner. This is a 2.5 screw. We can uh, y alternatively use a 3.0. In this case example, we've used four small skin incisions to correct our hallux valgus deformity. These can be closed per the surgeon's preference. Postoperatively, the patient is placed in a weight-bearing surgical shoe. Dressings are removed at one week for incision check and they're typically allowed to shower at that point. I like to transition my patients into a sneaker at about four weeks.